Welcome to FOSS North 2020, a virtual event. I'd like to thank our sponsors and our partners. Welcome. Uh, we're finally getting started with this year's event. Uh, so welcome on the virtual stage, Julian. Go thank ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, a, it's an honor to be here and uh, to, to open up the event to be the first one. <laughs> I was actually, uh, I thought there was an event before mine, but uh, that's, uh, that's fine. Um, so just to, to give a, we have an hour. Uh, I think that the presentation will take some 30, 40 minutes or so. Um, uh, first thing, this is about the ScanOSS open source project. Uh, I will just take one slide in the beginning to talk about the company, but it's, it's all about the, op the open source project and the Software Transparency Foundation. Um, so I suggest to do it like this. I don't know if it will work with, uh, with you. How, um, I, I will prefer to just go ahead with the presentation and allow anyone to stop me if there is questions. And if the questions, so, so that we don't lose the, um, uh, the context. And then if the question is going to be answered in a, in a uh, next uh, slide, then I will, I will let you know so that we don't uh, uh, deviate from the, from the topic. Does that, does that make sense? It, it does. And, and I think everyone has a little raise your hand uh, icon in the lower right corner. Okay. So would I, would, would I see that if, if, I'm in a, um, if, if I'm in full screen, would I see that? Maybe not. I, uh, probably not, but I, I'll interrupt okay. you. So, yeah, 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 so yeah, Max okay. Huber raised his hand. Did you see that? I saw it. I, I did not. <laughs> okay. okay, but then, I, then I'll watch out for it and I'll interrupt you. <laughs> okay, awesome, awesome. Thank you very much then. Okay. All right. So as, as I said, just a brief information about ScanOSS, the company, in case someone is not familiar with us. Um, you know, this um, commercial proprietary SEA tools with... Um, a knowledge base behind that you can use to compare and, and detect presence of uh, files or fragments of files have been available for almost 20 years. And they've always been super proprietary and super expensive. I mean, that, that, that's the reality with these kind of tools and they are available usually just to uh, large corporations. And with having a first open source platform, we disrupt this technology entirely and, and also we are not a software provider. ScanOSS is a data company. So what we sell is data subscriptions to our knowledge base. And to facilitate access to our data, we make the entire um, uh, uh, platform as open source. And of course, without data, the platform does not work. However, you have two options. One is to create your own knowledge base, which is something that you can do when you want to compare uh, you're interested in identifying a certain um, number of components or, I mean, there's a number of use cases, or you can use the knowledge base that is provided for free by the Software Transparency Foundation, which I will present uh, in, in this presentation as well. Um, so what we're seeking is massive adoption of software bill of materials by making the platform open source and by providing a free service to the knowledge base to everybody. This solves a big problem in the in the industry, and also unlike the technologies that uh, some of you are familiar with, these proprietary technologies were built for auditors, meaning someone who will take an, an, a, a code base and analyze the whole thing and end up with a uh, with a, um, a report that is usually for part of the due diligence from a, uh, an M and A. Uh, but not for developers. And interfacing and automating these tools has always been a, a pain. Our, our tool is built for developers with this uh, shift left uh, approach in mind, which means to move to an earlier stage in the development process, the, the validation. So th that's about the company, right? Uh, about the, the platform itself and the technology. It, it happens to be not just open source and free, the, the free tier of data to everybody, but also happens to be the best in the market. And, and why is that? Well, first of all, by being open source, there is no more secrets on how the data is being handled. When you expose a proprietary code from a company and you need to um, make an analysis, it's always a concern on how, what is that proprietary tool doing to your uh, code? 
and and then all these vendor lock-in mechanisms are also gone. Is 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 something that I mean you you own your own data. Um, and the database is it happens to be the the biggest database in the market and the fastest and most accurate. And that is because we have our own database engine that's been designed uh, specifically for this purpose of storing uh, large amounts of data and comparing um, source code fingerprints. We're talking here about 146 million URLs, 100 billion files, and uh, almost uh, three uh, trillion uh, lines of code. So it, it, it's it's huge, and uh, the accuracy and the completeness of the results that you get are make the software bill of materials actionable so it's not a software bill of materials that is to um, to be left in a in a drawer but instead is something that you will use from your ci cd pipeline to compare and make sure that you are not introducing anything that has not been declared and approved and ultimately, we're solving the inbound SBOM uh, problem. We're bringing transparency to the supply chain by letting anyone in the supply chain, no matter if it is a big or medium or small company or even an independent developer, um, to you know, using and giving access to this kind of technology to build a software bill of materials that is checked against against uh, plagiarism. So we're going from a scenario where only large companies have access to this kind of tooling and therefore they have to carry with the expense of auditing everything they get from the supply chain and uh, not to mention the, the risk associated with that. In many cases, a company will get um, software in a binary form. So it never has access to the source to the uh, source code, meaning you know they have to even reverse engineer binaries to try to detect presence of open source. And then we're going to a scenario where anyone can afford because this is actually available for free to anyone. So yeah, small companies or even independent developers can actually generate a bill of materials properly and that is uh, checked against plagiarism. And therefore large enterprises have only um, a, a need to validate what they're getting rather than having to audit everything that lowers the cost and increases efficiency and lowers risk. So far, so good. Any any questions? No, no raised hands yet. Okay, good. So I'll I'll, I'll keep going. Um, and of course, ha having this free uh, and uh, open source platform, and having a uh, free knowledge base, a, a public uh, knowledge base service behind. Um, is, is gathering a lot of attention and, and an ecosystem is building around our technology very quickly. Other tools like uh, ORT, I'm sure you're familiar with ORT and uh, Foslight, which is uh, developed by LG uh, in, in South Korea and Fosology, who, you know, I'm, I'm sure you all know Fosology. These tools integrate ScanOSS support by default. I mean, they, they already feature uh, detection by comparison against our knowledge base. So uh, just to, uh, let, let's take uh, Fosology, which is the oldest tool. Um, Fosology makes detection of copyright statements and license um, uh, licenses by looking at declarations, license files, license headers, copyright statements in, in file headers, and so on. Now Fosology can detect a license from a file that does not have a license. Um, a file header, for example, just because it's compared against our knowledge base and then it comes back, this file contains this license or is it released under this license? Um, we also have other SCA vendors integrating uh, ScanOSS and using the technology to improve their products. We see uh, law firms and audit providers who did not have access to this expensive technology and now they can do that. So we see uh, a number of companies starting up or, or companies that already existed and did not provide aud auditing services, now they start to do so. Uh, we have universities hosting mirrors of the uh, public knowledge base. And the, the interesting fact is that large enterprises, since now not only that they have the ability to um, I mean, from th their suppliers have the ability to use our technology. Now they start to demand 
we see um, companies that start to demand from their suppliers that they run um, scan OSS to make a software bill of materials checked against plagiarism. And, and this is critical in the example that I was giving before. A company buying software that is delivered as, um, as uh, binaries. You know, it's a lot easier to make, uh, or at least it lowers a lot the risk and, and expense to, to demand from your supplier that they produce a software bill of materials using scan OSS. And um, our technology is, is available. I mean, the, the, the platform is available in, in uh, public repositories. Uh, CLIs, our, you know, the main CLI is written in Python and um, is available in the, in the Python uh, index um, repository. So you can just do pip3 install scan OSS on any computer. And then you just do scan OSS dash pi scan a directory. And then you get your results in standard output. No, no authentication is required, no user accounts. This is free and anonymous to anyone. And then there is also a JavaScript CLI, which is in, in NPM, that you can also is install and use. And this is, it comes quite handy for making, um, for example, integrations from web pages where you need to scan something and get results. Or if you want to develop, uh, I mean, you, you cannot go farther left in your shift left approach than the IDE. So if you want to make a plugin that intercepts your control V and gives you an error whenever you're about to paste a uh, known open source, then, you know, that, that is a, a cool feature, for example, like you can build with the, with the JavaScript CLI. We do have a reference code in, in GitHub. Everything we, we write is in GitHub. So in, in, in that... Um, uh, github.com uh, slash scan OSS, you have access to all our repos. And, and it's not just CLIs, we have also built the UI. And uh, disruptive, like everything we do, it happens to be the first um, uh, app. So it's, it's not a, a server uh, side application, it's an actual multi platform app. So if you go to our website, scanOSS.com, you have pre built binaries for. Uh, Windows, Mac OS, or Linux, just download it, double click on it, and it launches the UI you see in the screen. And from that, from there, you can point to a directory. It will launch a scan, and you'll see the progress. And towards the end, you, you have a graphic that tells you the breakdown of licenses that were detected. You can go through your file tree and make the identifications. And at the end, uh, you end up with a, a software bill of materials that you can export in uh, SPDX, or you can have a CSV if you want. So th this is a functionality that up until now was only available by paying really expensive um, uh, license fees to, to, to our competitors. And now we have this as, um, uh, as a commodity and, and as a tool that is available for everyone. And just like everything we do, this is also open source. So you have the URL to the repository in, in GitHub. Now, the Software Transparency Foundation is what powers this free uh, knowledge base. And the Software Transparency Foundation was started last year by ScanOSS. And this was triggered by, you all know, this uh, executive order from, from uh, Biden on improving the nation's um, cybersecurity, which triggered the NTIA's uh, RFC on, on what an SMOM should look like. But the NTIA has been for quite some time talking about not just what an SBOM should look like, but they, they raised the concern. Uh, this is from 2019, as I can see in the in the screenshot in the right, where they raised the issue of um, software bill of materials not being traceable in the software world, in, in the hardware uh, world, the bill of materials, which is what, where the term comes from. You can always trace back. I mean. Uh, uh, a, a car's gearbox has an issue and it just takes you a minute to trace back the suppliers until you get to that bolt that is causing the issue. Uh, while in software, we can rarely see, and that is what they point out, we can rarely see below uh, or behind one uh, level in that dependency tree. I mean, you, if you're lucky, you get software bill of materials from your suppliers, but this the bill of materials that were provided by their suppliers is they're just uh, totally out of sight and this is a problem so with this in mind the software transparency foundation was launched to drive uh, adoption of software bill of materials and to offer a notarization service for validating integrity of uh, software bill of materials and for linking and tracing software bill of materials across the supply chain so 
the foundation launched two projects. And I, I talked uh, as, as the foundation as a me or a, a we because I uh, assumed the role of uh, leading the project office in the foundation. Uh, the foundation, though it was launched by by ScanOSS, it quickly gained uh, interest from a number of uh, companies and institutions. Um, and these two projects are OSSKB.org, which is the um, uh, this, the endpoint of this API, that is a, a public knowledge base. If you hit that URL, you'll get a website that gives you some um, live information on statistics of where the data comes from and so on. And then there is the sbom.info, which is a decentralized application running on a blockchain that allows you to store validation and linking information for software building materials. So proof of concept, and it, it is working now with um, a blockchain created by the University of Alicante, uh, which is a cooperative. So, you know, the, the good thing about this cooperative is that you do not have to deal with cryptocurrencies to pay for the transaction fees. Although it's a private blockchain, right? I mean, it's not 100% decentralized because it is actually running in a cooperative and you need to join the cooperative to, to run nodes and, and to have access to the technology. But it is a way to expose access to, to blockchain technologies uh, without having to worry about, about the, the cryptocurrencies. And the foundation sponsors get packages with... Uh, uh, transactions that they can use in the in the blockchain. Now, going back to the OSSKB.org, which is the most interesting part here, talking about um, uh, the SCA tool, uh, ScanOSS has donated a, a perpetual license of the knowledge base to the uh, Software Transparency Foundation. And the Software Transparency Foundation offers, of course, a perpetual and free of charge service that allows you to, to use um, the the open source tools. It is safe because by being public and open, there is no authentication required and, and nobody knows who you are. It's anonymous and safe. And, and then you're not exposing your code. You're just getting fingerprints calculated using an open source algorithm. And those fingerprints are sent to the API for comparison. And it's also stateless because there's nothing, there's no um, sessions. Basically, you uh, make a call to the API where you send the fingerprints and then you get a JSON response back. So nothing stays on the server. Nothing is registered on the server. And, and it's not me saying that you can go to the uh, to the GitHub repository and see it for yourself because the whole backend, everything, the uh, knowledge base, the, the scanning engine, uh, the API, everything is entirely open source, even the mining tool that you can use to make your own knowledge base. So by default, all the tools that we have in, in GitHub are uh, pointing to this endpoint, the osskb.org slash API. And uh, that's the, the UI, the CLIs, everything points to that uh, endpoint. Of course, um, ScanOSS offers um, um, de dedicated uh, data instances and, and subscriptions, in which case you will have to change the um, the endpoint and configure an endpoint and configure an, uh, an API key. But the software is the same. And it's the same thing, it's just uh, pointing to, to a dedicated and supported uh, endpoint. And therefore, there is a tier of free information, which is offered by the, by the Software Transparency Foundation and Mirrors. And then there is a paid tier, which is offered by ScanOSS, that is, is not just maintained and the availability and the throughput uh, is guaranteed, but there is also a number of extra layers of information that go beyond the, the regular um, SBOM making and identification of, of uh, components. You know, things like, uh, uh, I don't know, cryptographic algorithms used for export control or quality health metrics. I mean, this, these things are important for large companies but are not needed to create the software bill of materials. And one thing that, that we have that is extremely valuable here is the it says, you can see as in, in on the free uh, offering, there is SESPOM generation and snippet detection licenses. And it says uh, package URL array. This is something that um, we it's, it's, it costs a lot of money. I mean, we have a team of uh, curators that are actually making these relations. And I don't know if you're familiar to start with, with uh, Perl or package URL. It's a specification naming convention to 
identify um, components in a uh, uh, in, in a specific repository, right? So it's, it's one of the many attempts of creating a set of coordinates, though it seems to be the one that is really gaining a lot of traction because you know most open source tools are using nowadays. So what we're doing is we're connecting this package URLs together. And that is something that you can only do manually. I mean, not, not because a, a, a component is called uh, X in, um, in GitHub means that it's going to be called the same in the uh, uh, Python uh, Py repository, for example. And, and the other way around, sometimes, um, you know, components are called different and sometimes components have the same name, but they are different components. So this is something that requires a curation. And every time we return a result, we give you a package URL array pointing at, for example, the um, uh, PyPy component and the GitHub component and, and the uh, Debian package and uh, Red Hat package, for example. So th this is what I have as far as material. Actually, it took a lot less than 30, 40 minutes. It took 21. Uh, is there any questions here? I actually have a question on, on this uh, last yep. slide, and it's uh, it's the the model. Is it um, is it o an open core model, um, or or how is how how's the the Scan OSS version built, so to speak? Is it possible to extend it with your own models modules as a uh, as an independent third party? You you mean data more uh, like layers of information? You mean? By, by no, I'm I'm thinking it. more like licensing and, and business wise. The, the okay. Um, well, the, the way it works is simple. I mean, um, usually, which is also disruptive, when I talked about the disruptive uh, uh, revenue model, model is that, you know, usually when you have a proprietary or commercial SCA tools or, or any kind of tooling, people have to, um, I mean, the, the sales cycles involve a... Uh, an evaluation first, and its contracts put in place, and and, and so on. In, in in our case, usually customers have already tried and sometimes even integrated the technology. I mean, you can use the Software Transparency Foundation, and you can use that uh, endpoint for free. I mean, you you don't need to to pay anyone. It's just that you have to keep in mind that it is uh, community uh, maintained, and that there are throttling mechanisms to make sure that the service is available to everyone, right? So if you start hammering on a, on a server, you will see that your performance will decrease uh, so just to preserve the, the, the availability to others. While if you are a company who want to has a, you know, you have a mission, a critical application, or you have your CI CD uh, pipeline that you want to connect and you don't want to be uh, depending on a, on a, on a free or public service, then you do get your own um, SaaS or on-premise deployment where using the same exact software, you don't have to change anything. You just point to the uh, the endpoint that was given and, 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 and that's it, basically. Uh, the, now, these extra layers of information come as extra sub-arrays in your, in your response, but it's the same format. So it's the same JSON array that you get from as a result from the API. Now, the generation of, of um, uh, SPDX or Cyclone DX, uh, SBOMs at the end, is something that is done on the client side. So uh, that, that is a feature in the uh, Python CLI, it's a feature in the, uh, in the audit UI, in the audit workbench. Uh, but the actual raw response that you get from the API does not really change it with the exception of containing more sub-arrays in, in the case of the, of the Paid version. Does, does that answer your, your question? Or yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, no, no problem. We we also have another question from Florian Wagner. Um, mm -hmm. Would you like to uh, unmute yourself and ask the question directly, Florian, or type it down? Yeah, sure. Um, so my question is: uh, you you talked about this Perl uh, that uh, identifies uh, components inside of a repository or so. Yep. What? How exactly does this or the whole system work if you have unclear splitting of code into components? I'm thinking things like header-only libraries and so on, where where it oftentimes can get quite muddied where exactly the boundaries between components are. 
Um, well, the package URL, basically everything we have in our knowledge base comes from uh, download URL. So there's always a version of a component. I mean, like let, let's take GitHub, for example. In, in GitHub, you have a users that have repositories. So in repositories, usually have tags which uh, match your versions. So in that case, what we are mining is tags, right? So th that would be the definition. I mean, if you're talking about a header, something that is part of a component in GitHub, it will be identified as the component in that case. And, and the package URL will be pointing to, um, uh, will be pointing to the actual component in GitHub, right? I mean, uh, uh, package URL, uh, runs at component level. Okay, so in this example, component basically means a whole repository. Or... In this case, it's a whole it's a whole repository. Yes. yes. Okay. Now, now, you know, of course, in many cases, a repository will contain, uh, especially if you're talking about uh, uh, C development, for example. In many cases. A, comp a component contains subcomponents, which are dependencies, right? In, in such case, the match will not point to that component, but it will point to the actual source because the release date is what is used to determine the origin. I mean, we always point at the oldest release date for the oldest known uh, component version. Does that make sense? Yes, makes sense. Makes sense. No Thank you very much. No problem. Then, then there is also, I mean, you see here dependencies. Um, depend, this is deeper dependency information, but in the audit workbench and the JavaScript CLI, um, you have a feature that actually makes detection of uh, dependencies within your code base, depending, like looking, for example, at your requirements TXT or uh, POM XML or package JSON. I mean, depending on the on, on the programming language or even build system, we uh, perform that identification, which is a, a functionality that collides with uh, ORT, for example. Uh, this is not it does not pretend to be as 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 good at that, but it gives you some basic detection of of uh, uh, dependencies. Um, the Python CLI does not have that yet, but it, it will be coming uh, soon. But what we will feature is the ability to decorate the the um, dependency with license data for example or or, or things like that and and that is also a, a new um a endpoint that is coming up uh, soon and it will work at the package url uh, level cool we, we have another question coming in here from christian vege um mm -hmm. Does the knowledge base contain info in how far I can trust the supplier of a FOSS component? For instance, I would trust the FOSS foundation most and put less trust in a single source company like MongoDB. Yes, uh, well, n not really. I mean, we are just re reporting in this case that the purpose is to uh, make the identification, right? So in the case of the free service there is not much about health or quality or anything like that i mean it's just the, the pure identification so you will be point be pointed at the source uh, then as far as security i mean w one thing that uh, that we are also um looking is at providing because that, that is a problem that is resolved by the software heritage right i mean the software heritage does provide you with a uh, secure repository where, where you do have um, uh, copies of the code that are guaranteed to to not not to to being modified and are checked for integrity. Uh, so I actually um, I'm, we, we've been having a, a, a meeting uh, yesterday with the team and we were discussing this as uh, as to providing not just the URL to them uh, where the component was found but also. A URL to the the software heritage, where you have the guaranteed integrity of the of the components that you are downloading. Cool, thank you, uh, Christian. I, I hope that answered your question. 
Otherwise, you need to type it maybe, out again. Maybe I, I can stop sharing the screen so that I can see if there's questions and stuff. Let's see. Yeah, please. Uh, OK. So, ah, so also, thank you from Christian. So that was good. Oh, OK. <laughs> OK. And, Do we any have questions? Yeah, exactly. Seems awfully quiet. But then I'd like to thank you a lot for a very interesting presentation. Um, Pleasure is mine. Very nice.